Yo, what's going on, everybody? It's your boy Praxis, and I'm back with another video, man. And if you have not checked out part one or episode one, link is in the description, man. I took this account, dropped it all the way to division one. Okay, drop this account all the way to division one just to see what it's like being down here and help you guys out how to get out and dealing with these type of players or however they play. I don't know, but if you guys didn't watch episode one again, as I said before, go check that one out. And I'm going to be probably doing this up until division maybe 10. If I don't see a difference between one and 10, I'll maybe go up to 12, maybe 15. But I think once you reach about 12, 13, I think that's where you start to see a difference. Maybe that's what I'm guessing. But hey, also, as you guys can see here, I have my cam on. I'm going to green screens messing this up i'm going to be doing a hand cam if you guys don't know i play claw so you're going to be seeing how exactly i hold my controller when i'm playing the game okay now if you don't want a hand cam i don't know what to tell you for this one i'm going to do it if you guys want me to do this more in the future just let it be known in the comment section but keep in mind guys i don't really have my hand on my desk when i play it's usually under so uh it you know if I have any problems i will let it be known if not you know we're gonna keep rocking out but i shouldn't especially against low low division players right but hey let's get this thing started man i done done enough talking right if you haven't yet hit the like button for me and uh let's get into the video now it looks like my first opponent wants to use justin gaethje which is fine uh we'll go with someone uh let's just see we'll go with patty why not Patty got a lot of hate. Why not go with Patty? Patty Pimblet. As you can see here, I got one mouse pad here. And this is my old one. And uh, <clears throat> I have this one here. It's gray one. It's a very long one because I play mouse and keyboard on video games now. So um, I really have to throw my mouse around because I use my arm. But that's not what this is about, guys. If you don't see, this is how I play the game, man. This is claw. I throw uppercuts basically by hitting these two buttons with one finger. So A with the thumb, X with the index, and then um, obviously it's the opposite for the other hand. Here we go. This is how I play. So you can see my opponent here. Spin an elbow. That opens up an opportunity for me to throw something. You see he throw that kick. You look at the stamina. You do see it slow. Opens up an opportunity for us to throw. Nice. Nice. Boom. He, see how he overthrew there? He threw two elbows and then followed up with the with the kicks. And he missed that kicks. A lot of his stuff, like those kicks, he's moving forward, throwing himself in the very dangerous zone. As you see here, he does the same thing again. Notice how he's doing, repeating the same thing over and over again. So let's see. Does he does he change what he's doing or does he gonna keep on throwing them? Nope, we, he doesn't. We check that. Okay. He throws. We go ahead and throw our counter. Three uppercuts by him. I wasn't able to counter with an uppercut. You guys didn't know, man. If your opponent throws a body shot, body hook right there. See right there? I could throw an uppercut counter if you block it. He's probably going to throw the double low kicks. I'm just waiting on him to throw him. There it goes. Whoa, he threw it to the body that time. Okay. He goes one, two, three. He does miss, so we open up a window for us to counter. He lands a nice roundhouse. Another roundhouse. He's still moving to full forward. And also... He threw it in the pocket, so it didn't do much damage. So double jab, roundhouse to the body. You can see there. Now, if you go back and replay that, notice how I threw the body shots. I threw the body shot after I blocked his. So I blocked his, and then I followed it up with a rear uppercut, followed by a lead hook to the body. A little trick if you didn't know, man. So an elbow, roundhouse to the body. Risky uh, hook I threw to the body. Could be through an uppercut, I get rocked. Again, he does with the double kicks. See, he's gonna continue doing the double kicks, okay? He likes to jab cross as well. So with us knowing that, we know the jab cross is coming. There goes the jab roundhouse to the body. He throws it in the pocket. Again, I'm not throwing crazy combinations. I'm not doing nothing that you can't do. Again, he does the same thing. A lot of these lower division players are set on doing certain things. This guy wants to throw jab cross roundhouse. He likes to throw lead low kick, followed by roundhouse to the body. A lot of these guys do the same thing over and over again. There goes jab cross, jab cross again, see what I mean? It's like there's no thought process in the, the way that they're playing, so it's like you're going to just continuously make the same mistake. Let's see if he goes to jab cross again. Jab cross again, see what I mean? There you go, jab cross lead up with that. Let's see what he does now. Jab cross again, let's see if he's gonna throw a jab cross again. He throws it again. See what I mean? 
There you go. He mixes up and goes to the body there. But, like, with how predictable he is, he's going to... All right, now, see how, how... Now, this is how you don't set up strikes. You don't set up strikes by basically, oh, this didn't work. I'm going to switch it up, and then I'm going to do this. It doesn't work like that. That's how you be predictable. Because if that doesn't work, I'm expecting you to try to mix it up and do something else. And we're like, okay, I wasn't able to land up top. Let me try to go to the body now. That's too obvious. You need to, the way you set up strikes is get them thinking about something. Now, the only way I'm going to think about that strike is if you land it. And you land it significantly or you, um, you're frequently. There's strikes like overhands or high kicks that ha do high damage that get that you know you have to worry about and you set up or there's small things like jabs that you throw that they would have to worry about it's like a consistent jab that's how you set them up right and then they try to slip you just throw a hook something simple like that he shoots a takedown he turns it up both of his takedowns he's turned upwards we're gonna go two knees to the face again we was able to land both of them again go back to the body spin an elbow maybe a one two now yep one, two again. The body shots again. We drop him. One, two, drops him again. One, two. He's trading with low head health, so I'm going to continue to trade. One, two, maybe. Yep. Good night, Justin. You see what I mean? Like, it's, it's literally the same thing. He quits out, by the way. It's the same thing over and over and over again. And a lot of these guys don't make the proper reads bro just make the reads i promise you, you'll become a better player if you make these simple abc reads man okay now let's move on to the next fight all right here we go with the next fight i'm not really sure who my opponent wants to use okay jose aldo max holloway okay let's try to go with somebody obviously not on max holloway's level um <laughs> Maybe Sadiq Yusuf? Why not? Why not Sadiq? Don't really use Sadiq. Ah, oh, he's going Dan Hooker. Michael Johnson. You know what? Diego Sanchez. Why not? Diego Sanchez. Why not? Okay, bro. Pick your fighter. You you ain't this confused. You're not you're not this confused, bro. I respect the pick though. I do respect that pick. Let me fix my arms and my chair so I can rest them on. I do respect the Alex Sarah's pick. Like you can see here, guys, uh, sometimes I'll, ha I'll have this finger on this button, right? On left bumper or L1 on PlayStation. This on left trigger or L2 on PlayStation. And I know my thumb here on this side. And then this side, it's like my index finger hits these buttons. My thumb stays on the analog. Sometimes my thumb will come up and hit the jab. But uh, most of the time it's my index finger. Okay, so be up. Don't really know how this guy's gonna play. He's division three. We just start off with a one-two intercepting. Again, if you guys did not watch episode one, I explained you know the certain things that I'm doing as far as intercepting strikes or you know after my opponent throws and stuff like that. So if you didn't watch that one, I highly suggest you go check that one out so I don't have to explain it all again. But here we go. You can see here he's throwing his strikes moving forward. Okay. Try to catch him moving forward. I wasn't able to. I'm expecting him to maybe throw some kicks. Okay. I timed him well. And that's something you have to get better at, guys. It's timing your opponents coming forward. My head health is low, so I'm just going to back up. He overthrows here. So I'll go ahead and follow it around. Uh, hook to the body. Another hook to the body. Okay. Joe's crazy with the kick. I'm going to back up. Just trying to intercept him. Trying to catch him coming forward. Nice front kick by him. Nice. Now, we're going to play defensive. We want our head health to go back up. Because, again, I'm using... I'm not really using a great fighter at all. No disrespect to Diego. But now we catch him there. Now, I want, I want to try to trade again because how low his head health is. But now mine's is low. So, I'll go ahead and retreat. That's faint. One, two. He throws a one to himself. Then a jab. I mean, a cross-lead uppercut. 
Okay, so we know that he's possibly going to throw that crazy kick. And he throws that kick, leaving extremely dangerous. That crazy kick, so we can look for the duck. That one right there, we can look for the duck, or we can be completely out of range. Notice how I threw the hook that he threw the same kick off, like, same side. That his rear leg is the kick that he threw, and my lead side, my lead hand is on that same side. So if someone does throw a kick and they miss, or you duck it, nice front kick. You want to throw the hand that's on that same side. It's a bit confusing, but once you get it down, you'll understand it completely. Okay. Maybe he's going to throw the kick again. Bim, he threw the rear, rear kick, so we went ahead and throw the lead hand. If he was to throw the lead kick because of the stances we're in, it would be the opposite. Okay. I slipped the uppercut. I'm expecting that, that kick. He likes the front kicks as well. Look at the stamina. Again, another problem with the lower tier division. He's probably going to throw that kick soon. Or he's going to throw it way out of range. That's another thing you can catch a lot of these lower division guys right there. See how he's way out of range? He's nowhere near me throwing that kick. He's not going to land it. Now I'm just pressuring the body hook. Now I'm just pressuring the body hook. Boom. He throws. Look at the body hook. I'm just killing it. I'm killing his stamina. Just walking him down with Diego Sanchez. I slip that lead hook. Cross, lee hook, uh, slip lee hook, and then I get him up by him. It's all about instincts, man. And instincts, and you make reads. If you make the proper reads, the instincts will automatically tell you what somebody's going to throw. That's reads. Okay, we know he's probably not going to throw that kick. Keep it. Okay, think about it like this, because this will help you out. Think about everything with Tommy. That front kick. How, how long is it going to take for that to reach me versus him doing that extra kick, that kick that, you know, goes over my head or hits me in the side of the head? If I was to duck it, I'd duck it. But if I don't and I eat it, it'll be on the side. That animation is much longer than a front kick. So if I see the front kick coming, guess what I can do? Okay, if I'll just predict front kick. So I'll slip my head to the side by flicking my right stick or holding it in the direction. And then... If that's not the kick and your opponent is throwing the other one, you still have time to just immediately just duck. Right? So you go boom, which was, I basically went up there. And I slipped to the side. If I if he was to throw that other kick, I would have read it and seen the animation happening. And that's why you want to watch your opponent. And then I would have went duck. And then I would have ducked that strike and then threw the same hook and he would have went to sleep. But hey. With that being said, let's go ahead and jump into the next fight, guys. By the way, I do hope you are learning a thing or two, and I also hope you are enjoying this as well. Let's get it. All right, so here we go with the next one. It looks like this dude's going to go with the calf. I'm not really sure what he's going to use. He's going to go Connor. Okay. He's going to go Connor McGregor. Um, Let's see. Clay Guida. Why not? Clay Guida. And I'm just here to show you guys, you know, some of you lower tier guys, or really, I mean, I would call this like the bottom tier, no offense, but it's but some of you guys be like, man, everyone just uses the OPs. Bro, at this at this point of the game, uh, of this division, it, it, there's no OPs, bro. I'm beating these guys with... I just beat a Justin Gaethje with Patty Pimblett, bro. All right, so here we go. We're going against this Conor McGregor, which has insane hands, and we're using Clay Guida. Okay, here we go. By the way, I hope you guys are enjoying the hand count. Fake glove touch, cool. Let's see what he does. Double hooks. Jab, jab, cross. Okay, he's extremely aggressive. We know that part. He throwing kicks from moving far. Hooks from uh, way out of range. Elbows, elbows again. Okay. That kick was nice. Okay. And you, we're using a slower fighter, so the windows that we get, we got to take advantage of. Right there, he threw the kick moving forward. He got low stamina, so we're going to trade. I don't care who you are. <laughs> if you got low stamina, that stamina is king in this game. He throws that kick from way out of far, so we counter him, go back to the body. A lot of these guys, you can really work their body health and get them up out of there. Notice he's throwing these jabs from way out of range. Okay, that was a nice kick. He kicked, kicks me to the side. Nice. Way out of range again, so I counter him. Nice knee. 
He throws that kick. We're going to attack the body just to get him to lose some stamina because he threw that. Obviously, he didn't lose much because he was on a block. See this? What is that? <laughs> what? Like, what? he landed maybe a couple jab crosses, but he just threw all that for no reason. Try to go back to the body because I blocked that strike. Wasn't able to be successful. We know he wants to throw jab cross, but that's what I'm that's what I'm afraid of right there. Is him throwing that kick and me trying to slip. There we go. Hook to the body. Cross up top, followed by the hook to the body. Nice. I tried to basically I wanted to wait right there until he threw like the first strike and expected him to throw jab cross after that, but he doesn't. Right here. Like situations like that. See right there? That's why I don't want to move my head much. He kicks me back. Go back to the body. Okay. Keep in mind, look at Conor McGregor's stamina. Back to the body. These small strikes add up. A lot of you guys don't realize that. He's throwing elbows. Okay. He's probably about to throw something. One. Yep. There goes opportunity. Go to the body. See the stamina. Now we retreat. Now we go back to the body. Don't be too predictable with these body shots because better players will kick your will kick uh uppercut you. He pushes me back, pushes me back. Now that kick right there. I want to talk about it really quick. So basically, you see how that's on basically his uh well that's Conor McGregor's right leg, right? And that's on this side. I'm circling towards where that kick is would go. If I circle towards the opposite side while he's throwing it. I will literally walk to the outside of it. And I'll show you guys hopefully. Right. Ah. Oh. Hopefully, hopefully I can show you guys in the next round. But you see how this Conor McGregor. And, and you would think as you watch this fight as it first starts off. It's like, oh, this Conor McGregor might give him problems. And you probably thought that. Even with a, cali a player of my caliber, you're like, oh, he got Clay Guida, Conor McGregor. This Conor McGregor seems like, no. These guys drain their own stamina, bro. But I'm going to try to walk outside of that kick and show you exactly what I'm talking about. Now he's going to throw the low kick from far. A high kick from way out of range. So we just watch him. Throw all the body shots. A lot of these guys don't really block their body, I'm noticing. He's probably going to throw another kick from way out of far. Yep. Rock him again. Go body, body. Body up top. And I'm just throwing hooks. Hook to the body. Hook to the head. Now I want him to try to throw that kick. So, you, so I can show you guys what exactly I'm talking about. See how he just drained his stamina? Conor McGregor can't trade with Clay Guida now. Okay. Nice low kick. All right. That kick right there. I need him to throw that. I need him to throw that. And now, basically, I control this fight. If you If you're at this point of a fight and you lose it, it's your fault. 100% your fault. I'm trying to get him to throw that kick, but I'm about to just knock this Conor McGregor out. Okay. Back to the body. That right there. I will walk towards the opposite. I'm just going to finish this guy. He has no chance of winning. He has zero chance of winning. And that's it, like... It's literally that simple with these guys. A lot of these lower tier division guys, you can just watch them make mistake after mistake after mistake after mistake. And then you capitalize, capitalize, capitalize over and over again. It's, it's literally that simple, guys. Literally that simple. You get to a certain level to where you have to actually set up your own punches instead of just waiting on, on your opponent because you don't want to fall into the habit of waiting on your opponent all the time because once you play somebody that's good, they're going to realize that they're going to play the in and out game. They're going to go boo boo, get off of their combination, get off what they want to get off, immediately look to exit. And then they'll be like, okay, this guy's, I noticed what he's doing when he exits. He likes to do this. Okay, well, guess what they're going to do? Probably throw an uppercut if you got to go to the body. Or maybe throw a high kick if they realize you're doing certain things. So just want to be careful, bro. But hey, let's get on to the next fight. All right, guys, here we go with the next fight. Um,. Let me get my stuff out the way so you don't see nothing. Okay. Um, he looks like he want to go with the Brian T. City Ortega. And I think we'll end this one here with Frankie Yeager. We'll end it with Frankie Yeager. This guy got King Von as his profile picture. 
And he's uh, ranked 99. By the way, man, hey, listen. Just because somebody rank on this game, that level thing is 99. It means nothing. That just means they play the game a lot, okay? Just so you guys know, that, that means zero skill. Zero. But here we go. Division 5 opponent, 1,229 points. I'm currently Division 4. And uh, I wonder if any of these guys actually watch the channel. Here we go. Uh, T City's ready. Jeez, what is this long introduction? Frankie is ready. And here we go. Fight starts out. No glove touch, obviously. Let's see what he does. Now you see the hands go high, then the hands go low. Okay. Now we can walk forward and just throw some jabs, throw those out there, figure out what he wants to do. You don't want to start off a fight immediately throwing combinations. It's not really the smartest thing to do. Now, we know he's throwing spinning elbows, right? Those that kick from way out of range. We know the spinning elbows is coming. You see that? When you go against somebody that spams spinning elbows, it's one of the hardest strikes to deal with. You want to duck it or you want to pull away from it. Okay? I'm going to show you guys what I'm talking about. He's taunting for some reason. I mean... Trying to see if I can catch the spinning elbow. You kind of got to predict it. It's a really fast animation. You don't want to disrespect it. And now you can see that. See right there? See how fast it is? It's very fast. And honestly, I highly recommend you just blocking it. See right there? He's trying to basically intercept me. See, I pulled back there and it still caught me. It's a weird animation. Honestly. See right there? Still catching me. Your timing has to be immaculate when you're blocking. When you're going against the, the helicopters. See right there. Look at the body health. Look at the body health. We'll get on. He's going to keep spamming it. I'm going to follow up with a, with a strike. He, he throws that spinning elbow. I'm going to go to the body or I'm going to go to the head. With the hook. Okay. But again, the, the safest thing to do is just block it. Because it does a, a crazy amount of damage. Or I could just take this guy down. But I'm trying to show you guys a different way. Go to the body. Boom, there we go. If you can pull back on it. And you throw the, uh, the hook on the rear side, whatever hook it is, maybe the lead or the rear. On the rear side, you can get that rock. But you kind of got to predict it. See right there? You got to basically 100% predict it when it's happening. You got to be before it. You got to pull back before they throw it. See right there? We rock him here. I want to go to his body and continue to make, drain his stamina. He likes to throw the knees as well. Maybe a front kick. There you go. He threw that way out of range. We could probably throw a high kick, catch him. Yep. Because he's been thinking body. Hook up top. Hook up top. Here comes the spin. Here comes another spin. See what I mean? Like, you can really predict these type of players. Probably a high kick at the end of the round. Nope. Take that. All right, cool. And it's really just this simple, man. It, it really is. But notice what I'm doing. I really want you guys to notice that I'm not pulling. I'm trying to. I'm not trying to react to it and be like, "Oh, he's throwing it now." No, I'm pulling back way before he starts that animation of throwing it. If you don't do that, it's going to catch you. He thought he was Frankie Yeager. Now he's trying to wrestle. Pull back, boom. Now that one I was able to react to. If you if you know why, put it in the comment section. I'll give you a second. Why I was able to react to that one versus the other ones. Now, if you pause the video and, uh, you know, you went into the comment section and you guessed because he threw it moving forward, you were right. Strikes that are thrown moving forward, the animations are longer. Versus him sitting still throwing it. Okay. Okay. Go to the body. He throws knees. Now, if your opponent throws knees, you can obviously sidestep. 
And he's going to start spamming the knees now. Basically, you see right here, I'm look at Frankie Yeager. See how he's stepping like that? Basically, flicking your left stick up or down, not left or right. If you flick it left or right, it'll flick towards them or away from them. Flick it up or down, and you go sidestep the knee. Right there. See right there? And uh, if you throw a hook on that same side knee or the other one, they both do damage. And this same thing works for elbow. I'm sorry, for front kicks as well. And I'm just going to keep spamming it until I get it. So I can show you guys what I'm talking about. It's very hard to time. I'll tell you that right now. It's very hard to time. And this dude doesn't notice that I'm doing it. He's going to keep throwing the spinning elbows and the knees. We drop him here. Now, why we why did we drop him here exactly? Is because I threw first. I threw jab cross lead hook. Okay. And again. Look at the stamina. Look at the stamina. These lower tier division guys. Good night. These lower tier division guys have very uh have very bad stamina management. And I'm able to just take advantage of it every fight. Every single fight. Play patient. Wait for your opportunities. Take advantage of it. I mean, it's as simple as that, honestly. Just waited for that because he obviously wasn't noticing that. I was sidestepping it. Sidestepped it. Knocked him out. But, hey. We're going to cut that one at the... Uh, we're going to cut this video at this fight, man. I think we're going to probably reach Division 5 now. So, 1 to 5 and now... You know, probably do two more videos from 5 to 10, obviously. But, hey, let's see. I don't think we're going to get... Oh, nope, we didn't get there. It's all good. We're going to get there in the next video, guys. I do hope you enjoyed this one. or learned a thing or two. If you did, do me the hugest favor and subscribe up. If you're new to the channel, be sure to uh, subscribe. I just said that. If you're new to the channel, subscribe up. If you haven't yet, hit the like button for your boy. And uh, turn on notifications so you don't miss any of my streams or any of my uploads. I'm going to get up out of here, guys. It's, it's currently 4 o'clock in the damn morning, so... You can tell I'm about to go to shit. Love you guys, man. See you.